and welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Renovators, the business advisory show for real estate professionals. My name's Chanel and this is Rexy. How are you, Chanel? I am feeling good. The feeling sun's good. shining, it's Friday, we're filming. Yeah, spring's here. Spring I'm excited. Here. Today, I've wanted to have this guest on our show for a while now. Um, I haven't had the pleasure of knowing her for that long, but I've known about her for a long time. Uh, one of the prominent leaders in the real estate industry. Um, she's had senior leadership roles in all aspects in franchising and some of the biggest franchise groups across Australia, um, recently moved to Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, and Next door to you, I hear. Near me, yeah. yes. Um, and taken on a national CEO role. So do you want to introduce our guest? Absolutely. Lisa Pennell, CEO of Barry Plant. How are you, Lisa? I'm really well. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you so mm. much for, for taking the time to be a part of it. I know this isn't something that you love doing, but we so appreciate you being, being a guest and being a part of the show. Uh, it's my pleasure. Fantastic. Lisa, two decades plus of real estate experience in franchise groups. Can you tell us your story? I, I kind of fell into real estate, to be honest. I was working in an adjacency. I was actually one of the founding directors of the very first utility connection business in Australia. And that was my first exposure to the real estate industry and particularly Ray White. Uh, and after you know 18 months or so in that business, I transitioned across to work with Sam White. And that was the beginning of the end, if you, if you like. I came from a corporate background, but uh, once you get into the real estate industry, as many people would know, it's very, very compelling and very difficult to leave. It's great people to work with as well. Absolutely. And now you transition from utilities to the White family, and then you kind of moved around in that group. Yeah, I, I had a really unusual role with the White family. I worked extremely closely with Brian for many, many years, and uh, it was an absolute joy to watch him a very unique leader and very uh, inspirational leader, certainly stretched me in ways that I would never have imagined professionally and, and threw a huge number of challenges at me. I didn't have a title for many, many years. Uh, I just managed all of the crises, managed lots of different projects uh, and specials. That's a title by itself to mm. manage crises for real estate uh, agents. Well, so uh, yeah. It is a full-time yeah. job within it's itself. Yeah. It was. I certainly uh, had my hands full there. Uh, and, and as I say, I learned a, a huge amount of what not to do, um, obviously, in managing the crises, but as I say, experienced some really interesting other projects. My last role at uh, Ray White, Dan asked me to take on the marketing remit. It's meant that a lot of people think I'm a marketer. I'm actually not a marketer, uh, although I have done PR and I have certainly been involved in marketing. But uh, I took on that head of marketing role to, to um, get the rebrand there back on track, which had kind of gone off track. Uh, and really, again, built, a, built an awesome team, had two and a half years in that role and, and then went to Harcourts as COO. Chief, chief operations. That's right, yes. How difficult is operations of a franchise group across Australia? And what does it entail, mm. if you don't mind sharing a little bit about So, a COO role generally would cover, you know, everything to do with the operation of the business. So, a CEO is obviously setting the strategy and, and um, focusing on growth, and the COO will run, the, run that strategy, if you like. So, tech, marketing, operations. Um, it's an interesting space though, real estate, because although we have all these titles we throw around CEO, COO, blah, 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 um, a lot of businesses are not actually operating in that way. Those titles don't actually mean what they are in the rest of the world. Hmm. Um, I, and I think the most exciting thing about my current role as CEO of Barry Plant is I actually am a CEO. I report to a board, I operate across all aspects of the business, marketing, tech, finance, HR, admin, and growth, of course. And I do get to set the strategy, set the strategy uh, I do get to set the strategy, which is, uh, you know, an absolute joy and, uh, and gives me a huge amount of flexibility as well. And that transition from fixing it, crises, mm. to marketing, to branding, to operations, mm. now CEO, mm. is like a perfect blend. To yeah, I feel like I, you know, it is the perfect culmination of, I call it my Goldilocks role, <laughs> uh, because I feel like I, you know, not only have I collected a huge number of skills, and remembering I did live in Melbourne 24 years ago before this journey began, uh, I feel like I've come full circle, I've picked up all of these great skills and now I'm in a business where I feel I'm with like-minded people, I'm supported by a board who are very much in line in terms of my values and my intentions in the real estate industry. Uh, and so yeah, it's been, been an amazing ride. Yeah. Mm. Can we touch on your values and your intentions? Because mm. just in the short period you've had this role, I've se we've seen a change in your branding, the way Barry Plant's operating. The marketing, now. yeah, yeah. massive. It's changing. Mm. Yeah. I think the marketing piece was probably the most important piece uh, for the business. Before I joined the business, although I'd known Mike McCarthy for many years, and many of your listeners will know Mike, he's probably you know one of the 
kindest, most genuine, full of integrity people in our entire industry, and, and I don't know anyone who doesn't respect him enormously, as do I. Uh, but the business itself was very much perceived by people and even by me as a boys club. Yeah. Uh, and so the branding certainly made it look very masculine. Uh, so it's really important that we reflect the true nature of that business because clearly having appointed a female CEO, the board is not misogynistic. And in fact, what I have found in the business is that our directors have been so welcoming, male or female or anything in between. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't have been more warmly embraced. Uh, so for the business to be perceived for what it is, one of diversity, kindness, and real human connection was really important. So our new branding mm. is all about fresh colors, relatability, and of course being um, you know, on that, the new edge or the cutting edge of marketing trends. What goes into the branding? So you're mentioning obviously the colors and, mm. and the look of it. Is there, a, like, how do you determine that? Like, is there a sort of, um, you know, tests that are done that determine what feels more feminine? Like, how do you roll mm. out a, a complete sort of rebrand of, a, of mm. a group? Well, again, I'm not the marketing expert, but I'll, yeah. I'll tell you about our journey, yes. if you like. I'm very fortunate to have a team of really competent professionals. I'll say, first of all, Monica Kamenowska, who's our head of marketing, who came across with me shortly after I joined from another major brand, <laughs> uh, is a real estate professional marketer. She's absolutely um, incredible, as is her team, a couple of whom also came with her. Uh, for us, it, for me, it was about really understanding the nature of our group first. Who is it? Because marketing has to be authentic these days. There's no, mm. you know, you can't have the old school marketing where it was tell a story, you know, come up with a clever jingle and, you know, away you go. Particularly with social media and the transparency of the internet, people are going to find out pretty quickly who you are. Mm. So marketing is about attracting that customer for a conversation. But when they come for a conversation, they have to be getting what they think they're getting. Mm. You know, and, and so for, for me, it was, who are we? What is our brand? What is our, and I found, as I say, a bunch of really normal humans who are really kind and want to do the right thing. And even our top performers, that's the, that's who we are. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, the choice of colors, as I say, red, white, and blues, obviously being our colors over many years, could we retain those colors and still turn them into who we are? Yes, we could. We discovered that on the yeah. journey. But there's a huge amount of test and learn and, and feeling our way through and, and checking in with key members of our network to make sure that we're really hitting the, the mark. And I think when I presented the new branding concepts at our conference in Malaysia in July last year, June last year, obviously I hadn't slept for a couple of days before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and having experienced rebrands in other businesses, you know, normally it's a huge conflict because everyone in real estate particularly thinks they're a marketer. And they all have their own opinions too. And they too. all have their and very yes, strong opinions. Very strong. <laughs> and so, you know, we told the story, we put up the branding and we have a franchise council in Barry Plans, so franchisees get to have a very strong voice. So the franchise council were having their little meeting at the end of the day with the network. We're not allowed in those meetings. Oh, really? They decided, the head of the franchise council came out afterwards and said, Lisa, we decided to take a vote on the rebrand. <laughs> mm. Okay, with my previous scarring, I'm like, oh God, <laughs> what's going to happen? And he said, um, we've unanimously agreed to back this. Wow. And I knew that there was a couple of people in the leadership group, in our director group, who really wanted a different direction in terms of colours or whatever. So I was a little confused and, and I said, you know, what, what does that mean? And he said, we just want to move forward and we believe in you, we believe in this and it feels like the right thing. Now, that's, that doesn't happen. Unanimous votes rarely happen mm. in any and, and I think it's indicative uh, of the nature of the Barry Plant group. It's a tribe. They move together as one. They have really deep personal connections with each other. Uh, there's godparents of each other's children. There's people that go away on holidays together. None of this infighting that you see in uh, some other groups. Uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a tribe. Mm. And how has that rebrand been perceived on the market? Really, really positively. Yeah? I mean, our Good. market share has grown substantially over the last year and right. you know, consumer feedback has been amazing around the brand. Uh, we, I guess, it's one of those brands that the more we see it, the more we love it. Mm. Uh, and that's what you want, obviously, with branding. It grows on you really quickly. Mm. Uh, it's quite confronting at first. It certainly was for me when I first saw it. 
because it's very left of centre. Anything years when you've seen something for so long. It's true. Yeah. I was, you know, so, sorry to interrupt, but I was looking at the McDonald's branding over the years. Yep. Have you seen and those it's sort of clips? Macca's, I would no. say. And it, it shows like what a, a McDonald's originally looked like and then and then to where it is today. And you, when you see the original one, you're like, oh my God, I remember that from mm. childhood. But bit by bit, they just rebranded to the modernised McDonald's with the new menus and the healthy menus. And it's hard when you see it initially, but the more you see it, the more you familiarise yourself with it and then it becomes second nature. But that initial rebranding period yeah. can be very confronting when it's a household name brand. Particularly when, you know, brands need to be refreshed at least every kind of five years. Yes. Or they get tired. Correct. Something that looked amazing, you know, eight years ago, if it's still the same, it doesn't look amazing anymore. <laughs> it looks dated. It doesn't matter how good it was. And so, you know, in picking our colours, we analyse colour trends for the next 10 years. Cobalt is the, you know, the leading colour trend for Ooh, the next I 10 years. Oh, I love some cobalt. Yeah. And, you'll, <laughs> and you'll notice that in other industries, um, you know, big players have already owned that colour. And so, you know, we're thrilled that we own that colour in mm. our in the real estate space. Uh, and it looks, we've got a billboard campaign running at the moment throughout Melbourne on major billboards. You might have seen, seen it, them. Yeah. You know, you can't miss it. Mm. It's beautiful. Uh, mm. And so our campaign at the moment is all about establishing that new brand mark because it is so far away from where we were. Uh, but you're going to see some pretty exciting marketing stuff coming out later this year. Very cool. Yeah. Can we backtrack for a moment? Sure. You mentioned tribe. Mm. A key word that stuck, stuck out, stood out to me for me when you were talking about is about the tribe that is Barry Plant. Yep. Can you elaborate on what, what you meant on by this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, businesses that have strong teams will always exceed performance of businesses that don't. And it's rare in a franchise group for the whole network to be operating as a really high performing team. And that is the unique nature of Barry Plant. Every, every business has its unique aspect to it and there's horses for courses. Um, this, this business, as I say, is a, is a business that's all around helping each other, collaborating, moving together, you know, being agile, being nimble. And again, I guess, having come from much lo larger organisations, to take that experience and knowledge into a business that actually is, you know, at 72 offices, we can actually pivot super quickly. Yeah. Uh, Monica and her team managed to get our rebrand out in, you know, less than three months once we've decided on concepts, which is, you know, outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah. But it yeah. also shows your leadership to recruit, your recruitment to be able to get someone like Monica to, and kind of her team by the sounds of it, yeah. to come across and join you and have this unanimous support by existing franchises and offices. To yeah, yourself as well. there was certainly a lot of work to do in building the right team at, at the head office in the franchisor and I was really blessed that my head of technology is also someone that I worked before in, in a major brand who, you know, is the best of the best in terms of... Is it of blessed or is it your leadership? Sorry? Is it blessed or is it because of your leadership? That oh, look, I, I don't know. The harder I work, the luckier I get, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, I think I, I'm as lucky to have them as, as any, you know, it's always a two-way street, isn't it? It is. It is. And the rebrand, Lisa, we t you touched on real estate being a little bit of a boys club mm. and that rebrand also sort of stemming from that. Can you elaborate on that? And I guess where the future of real estate is going with, with mm. females. Mm. So again, I'll qualify the irony of Barry Plant being, you know, sort of looking like a boys club when it absolutely isn't. Yeah. Uh, so need to stress that point. But real estate, I think real estate's changed a lot over the last 24 years. Certainly when I started, I remember the very first sort of big story I managed in the PR space for Ray White was Amber Wershen, who you might have heard of on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, and she'd sold you know, a million bucks or whatever as a 21-year-old, and that was TV stations fighting over the story because women selling lots of real estate, young women selling lots of real estate. Now it's exciting that there's so many successful women in our industry. But I think you only have to look at the gender pay gap uh, news that came out a couple of I days ago to that. know that our industry is way behind the eight ball Correct. in terms of other industries. Uh, we've come a long way. If you, if you rewind that 10 years ago, it would have been quite different, but it still obviously has, its, um, has a bit of a catch up to, to, uh, to undertake. Certainly. And the future, future for Barry Plant, where are we going? Uh, Rebrands well, happen now? It's a great question. Uh, uh, the board are, are looking for quality rather than quantity, and that is exciting to me. We've already experienced more market share growth than I ever could have hoped for in the last year. It's actually shocked me how quickly we have actually increased our footprint. Of course, businesses are either growing or they're dying, so growth is important. But growth for growth's sake or growth of the wrong sort that impacts culture in a negative way is self-defeating from my perspective. So making sure that we align with the right people 
and that we set you, your ex, you and I have talked about this before, making sure that anyone comes in, coming into our business, particularly in business ownership, is set up for success and not mm. failure. Uh, our industry, some of the negatives that have crept into the, the industry is around recruiting and prospecting and, you know, inducements to get people to do things. But the question is, are they ready? And what's beautiful about what you do is you care about the office and their future. It's not about signing them on and making that office. Quality and making sure, over quantity. But it's also mm. making sure that they succeed. Mm. You set them up for success. Mm. You won't just sign a, a million dollar agent to open an office because that may be what he wants. You look at him or her, her hopefully, uh, and say, <laughs> is this right for you? Mm. Is this the right thing for you? What support do you need to make yourself maintain that level of writing skills? I mean. Mm. Um, GCIs, but run an office because yeah. some franchise franchises or offices don't do that. From mm. a corporate level, they'll just want to sign people up mm. and not look at success for the franchisees. Mm. And what I, I try not to get too distracted by what the competition are doing, but mm. uh, I think you know I'm not a politician. I'm not trying to get re-elected in three years. I'm looking at long term. You know, in ten years, what will this individual be? Where will that individual be? Where would this business be? And if we're making decisions with only a short-term view, we're not going to achieve our long-term objectives. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm delighted and humbled to be leading this group for now, but like anything, I will lose relevance at some point. And so when my caretaking of this brand is handed over to someone else, I want this business to be in an even better shape than it was when it landed with me. And what, mm. where, if someone's looking to join, what kind of candidates are you looking like? What, what, what is the ideal franchisee or tribe member mm, mm. look like? Great question. I mean, everyone talks about values and doing the right thing. And uh, really, it's when I look in someone's eyes that I know if they're our people. Uh, our, our people look back. Our people see a human in each other and in their customers. Skills you can teach, skills you can buy in, mm. um, awareness and connection, that's something that comes with the person, mm. with their level, personal level of awareness. And it doesn't mean you can't achieve great success. We all love the, the trappings of success. I love my Mercedes, I, you know, <laughs> we, all, we all love that. But it can't be the driver. Our business is one of purpose. I'm purpose-led and, and I, you know, our directors in our group are purpose-led. The, the profitability is a side effect of, of actually every step, every decision that's taken, taken through the filter of purpose. And my personal purpose is actually about moving the trust needle in our industry. It saddens me that uh, over time we've become less and less respected. Uh, and you, know, you only have to look at the Roy Morgan results to know that we're now so far down the ladder in terms of trust. Mm. So how do we do that? We do that with each and every customer by mm. being known as the trusted brand because currently there isn't really one. Mm. No. It makes it very difficult. And I know, Lisa, I don't want to touch on, on gender, but how is it as a female CEO in a, in a relatively male-dominated industry? Well, it's great now. Well, I mean, I think it's difficult for a, it's easy for a male to say that, but until you are a female in that sort of dominated industry, there's obviously, it, it's, it's not as easy as what people would think it would be as a male looking in. And there's trials and tribulations, and there's certainly a lot of benefits that come with it, but there's certainly a lot of judgment potentially that comes with it and, and juggling, you know, being a, a mother and being a female and mm. being a nurturer. Like it's, mm. you know, Lisa and I were having a chat just on our walk up here and we're talking about, you know, even just beauty appointments and trying to rush and, <laughs> you know, for females, men can get up and just go to work. For us, we have Although, to- Although, I'm not sure Rex just got up. Rex, you know, Rex is so much. It's like, the you know, it's, 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 it's like everything that. that goes into it and obviously mm. the judgment and the bias that females can face. Do you find that, Lisa, or have you found it's uh, been um, very well received? It, I think it's interesting because men that don't have a, a conscious bias will roll their eyes when we start talking about gender. And I think <laughs> Sorry. Re, re, you know, one, of, one know. of the absolute things I loved about Brian White was that he didn't necessarily see gender. Uh, and, you know, in my current board, I found exactly that same thing. But yes, I've absolutely experienced all sorts of um, things over my career, which one day I may speak about. Uh, I think Unconscious bias is much more dangerous than conscious bias because conscious bias is very obvious. Mm -hmm. I think the unconscious bias, it's been really interesting for Mike McCarthy, you know, as we've walked through this journey together, for him to actually see, as I've pointed it out, how differently he will be treated to, to me. 
in some situations. Oh. And of course, if you look around the real estate landscape, uh, most of the leaders are male. That's, and again, you look at the, the gender pay gap news that's come out, it's quite clear, you know, there's, a, there's an overweight at the top. Uh, Absolutely. Mm. So yeah, it it's shouldn't tough. be it's like tough. that. I think hopefully it's, it changes. It's changing a lot, and you know, small things like you know, work from home flexibility is giving women the ability to be able to manage families and school drop-offs and daycare, and um, I guess the, the the female sales agents now are rising through the ranks mm. because females are perceived from the get-go as more trustworthy. Mm. The second you meet a female, some a female that's selling to you, instantly psychologically trust is instantly formed because we're known as nurturers, and I think that there's a lot more education on that now and I think that the, the females will start to rise through the ranks and hopefully in the next five ten years we do see a lot more female leaders particularly within the real estate industry yeah. and I think it's really powerful. I think well, we're seeing more now as, as absolutely. we speak. And, and it's interesting if you look at any of the AI things that are coming out Rita or you know some other AI tools that are coming out females female voice that's why they choose that yeah. because there is an instant I guess it's less threatening, it's less confronting for a customer to be, to be in that space. Look, there's, you know, there's almost parity in terms of number of salespeople. Where the overweight to male is in business ownership, men are obviously much more likely to want to take a risk and step into business ownership. And I think we do it to ourselves as women because we have an unconscious bias. This is something I discovered about myself many years ago uh, when I was doing the juggling act with my daughter, trying to be everything to everybody, mm. as well as you know the career woman, the breadwinner, but also packing lunches and doing yeah. laundry and feeling like that was my... I had to do that to be a good woman. And I think it's important for women to recognise that, that, that parity means parity. You know, it's, in it's all not, aspects. In not all just... aspects, yeah. So we do it to ourselves and also some women do it to women. You know, oh, this yeah. is not a, a man-woman issue. This is a people issue. It's and correct. it's not even about gender. It's about diversity. So whether it's about your sexual orientation, your race, your gender, your political views, your religion, you know, we are human beings living the human existence. And the way in which we present is only a fraction of who we are. And interestingly, I, um, I just had a two-day retreat off-site with my team, my head office team. And uh, we had an external facilitator. We'd done some psychometric profiling, which you probably you know, use in your career. Mm -hmm. uh, and to see our disc profiles almost evenly spread across the whole board, to me, that is exactly what is going to be the mm. basis of this team um, knocking it out of the park. Diversity of thinking, mm. different thinking styles, you know, being able to challenge each other in, in a trusting environment. That's the key to success. Well, facilitating well that said. too. It's, not, it's having thinking different thinking styles, but yeah. having empowering the people to talk out and share their views is comes down to the leader, in my opinion. Um, and and Rex, you and I were talking about this before. What's the biggest opportunity in real estate? It's leadership at mm. office level. Mm. You know, yeah. anyone can come in and teach scripts and dialogues. You know, if you make the calls, you'll get the appraisals. If you do the appraisals and use the scripts, you'll get. But how do you lead people? Because leaders of real estate businesses, if they're going to run exceptional businesses, need to be able to run specialists. They need to be able to run the admin team and the salespeople and the PM team. And the... That's not about being a great real estate agent. That's mm. about being a great leader. It's one of the most difficult things about recruiting franchises mm. because you meet these high performing agents that are not necessarily going to be fantastic business people. Yeah. To yeah. run a business, there's so many other elements. You yes. are, are a psychologist. Mm. You are a, a coach. You are that you wear so many hats. And for a lot of agents, they're exceptional at selling. Mm. They're not exceptional at leading a team. There's not enough training for it either. That's though, right. Because the training is about script and dialogues. They know what to do. When it comes to leadership, not many people go and teach them how to run a business. Well, that's where the right, uh, the right corporate team and the right franchise really come into it, doesn't it? Because part of a tribe. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> well, and, you know, our kick kickstart last week, we looked carefully at the agenda, and yes, we still had our, you know, Spiro came and did his. Um, his he's a great leader. He's, he's awesome. He's a, he is. Yeah. Uh, but we also packed out our agenda with soft skills. Uh, and, you know, that was a general conference, obviously, for all of our people. But we do have our leadership conference overseas once a year. This year we go to Barcelona with our directors, oh. which will be fun. You know why I know this? Because one of their directors was supposed to come to my wedding in Italy and it's not coming because he's got Barcelona yeah. instead. So uh, thanks, Lisa. Sorry, but you should have told me the date. So I would have... Well, for us, it's a leadership conference. It's about teaching leadership skills. So how do we impart those soft skills on our leaders? And, you know, we, we have some exceptional leaders in our business that have built exceptional cultures within their business, and that is the key to success. 
Mm. You've got some great leaders and we some do. great officers. Uh, and people have been there for decades. You know, Bill Carp, an industry icon. Mm. You know, Dominic Bell Fury trained under him. You know, this, he, he has actually spawned a lot of the leaders of our, um, of our industry. Mm. And we're blessed to still have him running uh, two of our offices. Mm. And I feel like something that's slightly different from your brand is it's about the, pe it's about the office, not about the individual per se. Yeah, the ego risk in our industry is huge and I but think... there's less ego, I feel, like, potentially in your... Oh, in our brand? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's why I um, am so... I feel so aligned with the business. It's, it's not about any one person and, and as I say, the ego trap is real. It, it's pretty hard not to have it sitting on your shoulder as an agent or as a mm. principal if you're making... You know, if you're writing a million, two million, three million, you know, hard not to feel like a rock star, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, look, at, you, meant, you touched on Spiro, like, great leader. No ego. No ego. Largest office in Victoria. No one. It's the office. It's the group. It's yeah. not Spiro. Mm. Um, we squeezed um, 15 minutes in. As soon as I got here, I'd heard of Spiro. And Spiro, there's lots of stories about Spiro out in the industry. And I... I said to my EA, please get me in there as soon. I need to go meet this guy. And of course, he's a really busy man. I think he gave me 15 minutes in his <laughs> schedule. Um, two and a half hours later, we, was, we were still sitting there talking. And I think it's safe to say that that was a, a real connection. We are aligned. Uh, and he is a, I, I was very relieved to see that he is a, a decent, connected human Also a being. visionary, he, looking sort of five years forward always. He's not someone mm. that's talking about you know, the, the issues that are facing right now. Every conversation that we had with him during having him on, he was thinking forward yeah. thinking, he's five steps ahead. Yep. And yes, he's exceptional, but that also comes from the support from the, from the Barry Plant group. Well, it's two way. I think, you know, I, I'm not a real estate agent. I've never sold real estate. I've never run a real estate business. Can I touch so, on that for Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, yeah. Even that you're, you've been in real estate for over two decades. You don't show up, but yeah. over two decades. Yeah. You've never been a real estate agent, yeah. but you've had senior leadership roles with some of the mm. biggest franchise groups across yeah. Australia, now a CEO of the second yeah. largest in Victoria. Mm -hmm. Never done a real estate. How is that different to, how does this benefit you? I think it's a benefit personally, mm. but. It's a great question. Uh, you know, real estate, uh, let me think of how I'm gonna answer that question. You can take your time, I can cut and put it right yeah. on there. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> Many of the leaders in our industry are real estate people, let's be honest, so it is unusual to have a leader who's never sold or... But then I'd never done marketing and I headed up marketing for Ray White. You know, every role is a new role. I think in my crisis work at Ray White, I certainly saw all the things not to do. Uh, over the time of working so closely with so many different size businesses, you know, great relationship with Megan Jaffe. You know, mm. they're, they're these exceptional leaders, Megan's never sold real estate. Mm. You know, another great example of uh, being able to run a team, be a leader without those specialist skills. You know, being a leader is about leading a team. It's not about the doing, it's about the being. Mm. You as a leader, I feel like you empower your, you, you recruit really well mm. um, because you, you don't just paint a picture, but you're, your team members have followed you because you're, you're genuine mm. uh, and you empower them to do what what they need to do. Mm. You don't put roadblocks and pretend to know what what's best for the business. You create a yeah. problem and give it to them to sort of solve it. And I think that's the best way a leader should be. It's that teach the man to fish. You know, if you're going to micromanage, you'll only ever get you know, 10 hours of work done or 12 hours of work done. You know, if you, if you empower your team, you multiply yourself mm. and you get better outcomes because you will get that diversity of thinking, particularly if they trust each other enough to challenge each other. Mm. You'll always get the best outcome. And as I say, you know, I couldn't be happier with the team that I have in, within the franchisor. And so the flow on, the knock on effect from that is the support and the empowerment that they'll give to our network, you know, with that purpose. It, it's critical to success. With that, we're unstoppable. And, yeah. and I think it's reflected in that proof point of the market share growth that we've already experienced. In such a short mm. time. Yeah, yeah. Watch it's, out. Uh, it's very surreal, I've got to say. Mm. More than I could have ever expected. Mm. Mm. Wonderful. So. Parting words, Lisa. How do you look so damn good? <laughs> Running a franchise? <laughs> children? I don't know, have you got How a filter do you do on these? the camera? What is it? <laughs> 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 I, uh, honestly, my... Saving grace and the thing that's transformed my life the most is actually meditation. Uh, I think being able to quieten the mind in a busy mm. world. I saw a statistic the other day and I was actually talking about it at Kickstart to our people. 
we process an enormous amount of information every single day mm. now. 500 years ago, a highly educated person would be exposed to as much incoming information as we get in one day. Yeah. Yeah. And so being able to quieten the mind and be present, which what is what we're doing right now, but do it all the time. Do it whenever you're sitting with somebody. You know, if someone comes to my office door and says, can I grab you for a second? You know, to put everything away and to be there. You know, it makes you so much more effective and, and uh, that's the one non-negotiable in my day, every single day. Being present, very hard to do in a digital world, but very, very important. It's that connection. Exactly mm. right. Well, Lisa, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much. Thank you for being an inspirational leader. Um, very, very grateful to have your time on the show today. Any, any parting words, Rexy? Thank you so much again. And um, yeah, don't know what... Look forward to seeing how the Barry <laughs> plant... What happens yeah. to Barry <laughs> plant? I'm so excited. It's do I get to ask you a bunch of questions? You can ask whatever you like. <laughs> I told uh, you, I'm the asker. Uh, no. uh, bless. I really, uh, yeah, thank you for having me on. I think, um, you know, it's, it's great to be able to, to share a little bit of insight into what the Barry Plant Group actually is. And, you know, it is a legacy brand of Victoria and, and such a clean and wholesome brand, but I think a, a sleeping giant in terms of people really knowing what this group is all about. Uh, and I'm excited to share If they to want to find that. out more, how to they reach out to you or call 1-800 no <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely you know we're uh, we're always here to to talk we are definitely an attraction business and and i guess the more we elevate our brand uh, the more of that is happening we're not prospecting in the normal way that that real estate businesses are at the moment i know every salesperson's getting fifty four thousand phone calls every day that's not you know we're not in for the quick grab but anyone that's interested in joining you know, a purpose and being part of a, a purpose-led business we're you know we're very keen to talk obviously quality quality part of the tribe quality exactly over quantity right. yeah. Yeah. love it well thank you again thank you, lisa. lisa and thank, thank you so much for watching another episode of real estate renovators <laughs> <laughs>